Yes, guys, Cassie is back on the channel this morning, and I, I'm walking through a ploughed field against my better judgment. Good morning, everyone. It's Saturday. My name is Michelle. I hope you're doing well. And uh, I want to talk this morning about the disturbing Hara family. The reason why I'm bringing them up is because Warren Scott Hara, Grandma's brother, has been released. It's been reported in the media that he was released as of yesterday, September the 10th, uh, where he's living and uh, he's released with conditions. He's got to wear GPS at all times, etc, etc. So we'll talk about him. Maybe dispel some myths about what happened to Rosemary Bly, who's grandma's daughter. I'm not dispelling myths entirely because there's so little information known about the, the way that Rosemary Bly went missing. Let's just talk about it, right? But first, I'll just address something that came up from yesterday's video. A lot of people said that me talking about those leaked allegations about the conditions of which resulted in the uh, Sunwell's brothers being taken into CPS care was irresponsible. Right, look, it would be completely irresponsible of me to report those details as fact. To say that I know as fact this, this and this has occurred. I did not say that. I said multiple times that this could be a ruse, this could be a lie. I'm not sure myself whether it's true or not. But it's worth reporting on because it's out there. I'm reporting on things and discussing things that come up in this case. And that's one of those things that has come up in this case. Now I do agree with people who've said that the person, assuming this is true, of course, the person who has leaked this information will be in big trouble if and when they are found out. If this is a CPS worker and they are found out, sure as, sure as anything, they're going to lose their job. And yeah, there's, I don't know, doubts on the legality of somebody leaking information. But once that information has been leaked, as long as it's very, very clear these are just allegations and not stated as fact, that's not illegal. That's not irresponsible. The responsibility of anybody reporting on a case is that you are very, very clear what is fact, what is an allegation, and what is your own opinion and speculation. And I do that. I do that religiously. So I have deleted some comments, you know, saying shame on you and all of this. No. No. I mean, do, your, do you people write to mainstream media outlets when they report on unconfirmed allegations? because they do, the BBC are great at it. And they're not doing anything wrong. As long as they are very, very clear, this is not fact, this is not confirmed. It's an unverified allegation. So get right into the BBC, guys. All right, over to Warren Hara. Warren Hara was born in 1958 in Minnesota to Marshall Hara, found a bunch of birth records of uh, children of Marshall Hara. I'm not sure how many kids, but I found several. And uh, Candace is one of them. Candace Senior, grandma, is one of them. I don't know what the state of the mud situation is down there, but that's what she's come up to looking like. So he's been incarcerated since 1994, I believe. I'll put the records on screen. Eight counts of incest with a child. He was found guilty 
but not guilty because of mental impairment. But he has been incarcerated for a long time, but he's now released with those conditions on him, like I said at the beginning. So once people found out about Warren Hara's past, it then branched out into a whole raft of speculations that I've heard, all unconfirmed. Shock horror, I'm talking about unconfirmed allegations and unconfirmed speculations, but they're worthy of discussion. It's been pondered, it's been speculated as to whether the incest was committed against Candice or Rose. Now, I don't know whether Candice and Rose have got other siblings. I haven't heard any mention of them. I don't know. Candice is 39, so she was born in the early 80s. And Rose, when she disappeared in 2009, was 21. So that would have put her birth year at 1988. So if Warren was incarcerated in 94, then that puts them at an age where they were children. But it's a leap. It's an absolute leap to say Warren abused them. We don't know whether, well, I don't know whether grandma associated with Warren. So we don't know whether Candice and Rose had contact with Warren, their uncle at all. If you know, and you can provide me some evidence to suggest that they were, then I'm all ears, let me know. But because Warren and Grandma have a whole raft of other siblings, then those siblings are going to have had children. So Rose and Candice have probably lots of cousins. I know that Warren has a son. I only know this because he comes up in the criminal history check that you can do um, for the entire state of Wisconsin. So, you know, we don't know whether Warren abused one or more of his own children. I know he was married very young, but he divorced. So, don't know. Can I dispel myths about who Warren abused? No, because I don't know. We absolutely cannot say for sure whether Candice or Rose were abused. We know that Candice has said that she's had, you know, a hard life. So Candice had two kids when she was young who were given up due to abuse in the home. But she said she gave them up for them to have a better life than she did. We know she lies. <laughs> I and many others have, have discussed that situation with Candice's first kids. So this is a very, very tangled web. The Hara clan are tangled. There's lots and lots of them. They're not directly, before anybody says this, associated with the disappearance of Summer Wells. Absolutely not. But I think what we have to understand, given that Candice and Don and Grandma are still suspects, according to County Sheriff Ronnie Lawson, we have to understand them. We have to understand their lives. We have to understand their history. And while it's very murky, there are glimpses of dysfunction throughout the entire family, both sides of Summer Wells extended family. Tilly. I mean, we hear so much about Donald's essay of his stepsisters. We hear much less of Candice's early life. So it's murky, but still we have to consider what we do know about it. <laughs> I think that's too deep for her. She probably doesn't realize that she can actually swim. <laughs> So let's consider the disappearance of Rosemary Bly. This is another strange thing. You know, the Bly family 
the Bly Hara family have had two missing people. Now the chances of somebody going missing and never being found, I don't know what the odds are, but it's, it's quite rare. I mean, there's lots and lots and lots of missing people, but most of them are found. Either they, you know, they're runaways or they're found. But to be missing for over 12 years, in the same family. I think it's strange. Just because I think it's strange doesn't mean to say that there's a connection. I just think it's strange. And that's, that's all I can say. Tilly, we're not going that way today. We're not going that way today, come on. Look how cool this tree is. Yeah, some people have noticed. Yeah, there are, there are trees growing sideways. You know, they, they want to reach the sun. Now, the police in the Summer Wells case said early doors that there's no connection between the disappearance of Rosemary Bly and the disappearance of Summer Wells. Uh, the situations are very different. Different age of the victim, different circumstances, different state spread across 12 years uh, so the chances are the chances are they're, they're not connected but we don't know because we don't yet know what's happened to summer and we don't we don't know what happened to rose we know that she went out from her home one night around what was seven last seen by her husband christopher larson who three weeks later incidentally filed for divorce she was meant to be going meeting a cousin, don't know which cousin, but she never arrived. Five days later, her car was found abandoned with a hint of DNA that wasn't Rose's in a parking lot in Grantsburg, Wisconsin, which was about 30 miles away from where she lived. That's it. We don't know any more. Now, I've seen people speculate that the husband did it, the husband's got a violent uh, criminal record, so he must have done it. We don't know that. We don't know that. I've looked up criminal records for Christopher Larson, but there's more than one Christopher Larson in the area. One Christopher Larson does have um, charges for domestic abuse. One Christopher Larson um, at a jury trial was found not guilty of SA domestic abuse, but f found not guilty. Let me state this, not guilty at jury trial. Is it the same Christopher Larson? Don't know. I don't know. I can't confirm. I've heard people saying this. We do know that strangling somebody severe domestic abuse can result in domestic homicide. We know that. We know that from the psychological literature. But what we, what we can't do is put those pieces together. So we can speculate and in the true crime community there's nothing wrong with that, guys. As long as it's generating healthy discussion and not stating things as absolute fact. We don't know. There may be hints in the records of things that have happened. We know there's hints in the records of dysfunction throughout the Hara family. But as far as putting all of those pieces together and saying oh someone in the Hara family or, or Rose's husband was responsible for her disappearance you know because they murdered her and her body's never been found we don't know that we don't know that it's just very very intriguing I have looked into Rose's disappearance but there's so little out there's loads of loads of chatting on reddit Loads of chatting on Facebook about it, but to try and establish 
the facts as the bedrock of the case, that is all we know, or at least all that's been made public. So it's another head scratcher, but there's nothing to suggest that Warren Hara, uh, his charges are related to Candice and Rose. We do, we've no evidence of that. We know he's a bad guy, but we don't know whether Candice's hard life is because of him. But I would like to hear more about what Candice has endured. We know she had, uh, she married young, she was 19 and her first husband, the father of her two first children was like 42 or something. And there was abuse on both sides. They were both charged on both sides for violence. We can only speculate on what made her like that. Keep discussing it, but keep it classy. And yes, I am going to delete comments who say, shame on you. I'm discussing things that are being discussed in the true crime community. Yes, leaked allegations. The person who leaked them, if indeed it's true, is going to get into trouble. But it doesn't mean to say that nobody should discuss or, or even mention those allegations. That's my view anyway. If you disagree, that's fine. But, uh, yeah, spend some time writing to the BBC about the leaked allegations that, that they put out. So, there you go. That's all I've got for you this morning. I'll see you in the next video, and it's goodbye from Miss Tillington and Miss Cassie Springer, both of whom are filthy and need a bath. Bye, guys.